The Gnosis of the East. Direct experience over belief. The Gnosis of the East. Direct experience over belief is narrated by Zorin the Dragon. Greetings once more, seekers of the ineffable. I, Zorin, keeper of timeless wisdom and witness to the merging of great spiritual streams, invite you to explore the profound impact of Eastern Gnosis on the Knights Templar. In this chapter, we shall delve into the transformative power of dirt mystical experience, the transcendence of conventional theology, and the universal truths that unite Eastern and Western mystical traditions. The Templar focus on personal experience and enlightenment. The Templars those valiant knights who began as protectors of pilgrims and ended as seekers of the deepest mysteries. Their journey from outer guardians to inner explorers, is a tale that never ceases to fascinate me. It was their encounters with Eastern wisdom that catalyzed this profound transformation. I remember vividly the night when a group of battle-worn Templars first met a wandering Sufi mystic in the moonlit desert outside Jerusalem. The Sufi spoke not of doctrines or beliefs, but of direct experience of the divine. Taste, he exclaimed, his eyes alight with inner fire. Taste the wine of unity, and all your questions will be answered in that single sip. The Templars were intrigued. They had been steeped in the doctrines and rituals of the church, but here was something different a path that promised direct, personal encounter with the divine. It resonated deeply with the esoteric undercurrents of their own tradition. The whispered secrets passed down from master to initiate. From that night forward, I observed a shift in the Templars' focus. While they maintain their outer duties and adherence to Christian forms, their inner quest took on a new intensity. They began to seek out teachers and traditions that emphasized personal spiritual experience over blind faith or mere intellectual understanding. In hidden chambers beneath their commanderies, I watched as Templar knights engaged in intense meditation practices learned from Buddhist monks. They sat for hours, back straight, eyes half closed, seeking the clear light of pure awareness. Some reported visions of incredible beauty. Others spoke of a profound emptiness that paradoxically contained all things. The concept of enlightenment sudden or gradual became a beacon for many Templars. They recognized in it echoes of the Christian notion of theosis, the divinization of the human being. But the Eastern approach offered practical methods, step-by-step -step practices for purifying perception and realizing one's true nature. I recall one Templar master, whose name has been lost to history, who became particularly adept at these practices. After an intensive retreat in a cave on Mount Carmel, he emerged with eyes that seemed to look through the world rather than at it. Brothers, he said to his fellow knights, I have seen the face of God and it was my own face, and your face, and the face of all beings. His words captured the essence of the non-dual realization that lies at the heart of both Eastern and Western mysticism. The Templars came to understand that true Gnosis direct, experiential knowledge of the divine could not be contained in books or transmitted through words alone. It had to be tasted, just as the Sufi had said. This understanding revolutionized their spiritual practice and, ultimately, their entire worldview. Mystical knowledge. How Gnosis transcends theology as the Templars delve deeper into the realms of direct mystical experience. They began to recognize the limitations of conventional theology. Don't misunderstand me they didn't abandon their Christian faith. Rather, they discovered a dimension of spirituality that transcended the boundaries of any single religious system. I remember a fascinating conversation between a Templar Grandmaster and a Zen Roshi in a secluded monastery and the mountains of Japan. The Roshi asked, what is the sound of one hand clapping? The Grandmaster, after a moment of silence, replied, it is the same as the voice of God in the burning bush beyond words, beyond concepts, yet undeniably real. 
This exchange exemplified the Templar's growing understanding that true mystical knowledge gnosis lies beyond the reach of theological arguments or doctrinal formulations. They came to see that the finger pointing at the moon is not the moon itself, that the map is not the territory. In their secret gatherings, I observed the Templars engaging in practices that would have shocked their more orthodox brethren. They chanted Sanskrit mantras alongside Latin hymns, used Tibetan visualization techniques to contemplate Christian mysteries, and applied Taoist energy practices to deepen their prayer life. But it was not mere syncretism, or a haphazard mixing of traditions. The Templars recognized a common core of mystical truth underlying the diverse forms. They understood that whether one spoke of Christ consciousness, Buddha nature, or Atman Brahman. These were all attempts to point towards the same ineffable reality. This Gnostic approach allowed the Templars to penetrate beyond the surface differences of religions and touch the living heart of spirituality. They discovered that in the realm of direct experience, the distinctions between self and other, human and divine, form and emptiness, dissolve into a unified field of pure awareness. I recall a poignant moment when a group of Templar initiates, after an intense session of Sufi whirling combined with Christian contemplative prayer, sat in stunned silence. One of them, tears streaming down his face, whispered, how can we ever return to the world of divisions and doctrines after tasting this unity? It was a question that many mystics, East and West, have grappled with throughout the ages, the Templars' embrace of Gnosis over mere theology had profound implications. It led them to value direct spiritual experience over adherence to dogma, in a transformation over outer observances, and universal wisdom over sectarian knowledge. This approach, while keeping them nominally within the fold of Christianity, placed them in a lineage of mystics and seekers that transcends any single religious tradition.